More worries for the West Coast, more saber rattling for NATO and Russia, and more fish dying along the coast of Chile. This is Skywatch TV for Thursday, May 12th, 2016. I'm Derek Gilbert. First up, the Department of Homeland Security used New Yorkers as guinea pigs earlier this week. On Monday, they released non-toxic gases and particles on subway platforms to test airflow. The uh, purpose, measuring the potential impact of a chemical or biological attack. Today, the United States switches on the European Missile Defense Shield. This has been 10 years in the making. The system reportedly to defend Europe against Iranian missiles. And while Iran is definitely working on its missile technology, uh, this map shows the area that's being defended versus the actual range of Iranian missiles. So either it's defending against a potential future threat from Iran or the... Um, Russians have been right about this all along, and the defense shield is aimed at them. Uh, former Secretary of Defense Chuck Hagel says the recently announced deployment of NATO troops to the Russian border could spark a new Cold War. We told you last week about the official announcement that four battalions of NATO troops being sent to Poland and the Baltic states. Hagel says this could result in another Cold War buildup that makes no sense for either side. And meanwhile, NATO is conducting drills on Russia's southern flank. American tanks and fighting vehicles arrived in the nation of Georgia last week for an exercise called Noble Partner 16. This is the largest ever annual training exercise between the U.S., NATO forces, and Georgian troops. The exercise began yesterday, Wednesday, and continues through May 26th. Russian's foreign ministry accused NATO Friday of trying to destabilize, last Friday, of trying to destabilize the Caucasus region. Russia and Georgia, you might remember, fought a short war in 2008 over the territory of South Ossetia. This is a breakaway region of Georgia. Um, despite the claims of conservative talking heads here in the United States. Actually, Georgia fired the first shot. Russia came in after. But Russia has recognized South Ossetia and Abkhazia, another breakaway region from Georgia, as independent states, and they now have permanent military bases there. Now, Russia, for its own part, is um, announcing a new test of a nuclear weapon that is reportedly so powerful it could take out an entire country in seconds. The official name of this new nuclear missile is the RS-28 Sarmat, but NATO officials have nicknamed it the Satan. And Turkey getting in on the act, poking its finger into the eye of the Russian bear. Charges have been dropped against the man accused of killing a Russian pilot after Turkish planes shot down his fighter jet over Syria last November. His arrest was an important symbolic gesture by Turkish authorities to Moscow. Dropping all charges is another symbolic gesture, one which I could not demonstrate for you on this program. ISIS back to its tricks. Well, that's really an improper way of describing it. ISIS strikes again in Baghdad. A car bomb in Sadr City, which is a Shiite neighborhood on the east side of Baghdad, killed more than 60 people Wednesday, more than a third of them reportedly women and children. U.S. soldiers heading to Yemen. A top Pentagon official said the deployment is short term, but there's no firm end date. The ongoing civil war there has government loyalists backed by a Sunni coalition, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and other nations around the Persian Gulf, against Houthi rebels backed by Iran. So as we see the ongoing death and violence in the Middle East, much of it Sunni against Shia, which is a conflict that's been going on now for 1,400 years, we have to wonder at the mental state of an educated person who would actually stand up in public and give a talk with this title. Is Islamophobia Accelerating Global Warming? That was the title of a talk at MIT Monday, which is not a fly-by-night academic institution, so this talk has some credibility among academics. According to the description of this talk, it examines the relation between Islamophobia as the dominant form of racism today and the ecological crisis. It looks at the three common ways in which the two phenomena are seen to be linked as an entanglement of two crises, metaphorically related with one being a source of imagery for the other, and both originating in 
colonial forms of capitalist accumulation. I can give a rebuttal to that talk in about two seconds. No. Next question. Here's a more intelligent question. Why are Chile's beaches covered with dead animals this year? In recent months, an unusual phenomenon has resulted in 300 whales, 8,000 tons of sardines, 10,000 squid, and about 12% of Chile's annual salmon catch. That's 40,000 tons washing up dead on Chile's normally beautiful beaches. No one's sure why, although it may be red tide caused by this year's powerful El Nino warm water current in the Pacific Ocean. Needless to say, that much dead fish, dead whales, uh, are posing a problem for how to dispose of all of that meat. One bit of advice, uh, unlike the state of Oregon back in 1970, if you're looking for a labor-saving way to dispose of tons of decomposing whale meat, don't use explosives. Our camera stopped rolling immediately after the blast. The humor of the entire situation suddenly gave way to a run for survival as huge chunks of whale blubber fell everywhere. Pieces of meat passed high over our heads while others were falling at our feet. The dunes were rapidly evacuated as spectators escaped both the falling debris and the overwhelming smell. The city of Omaha, Nebraska, also dealing with a disturbing mystery. Meat-wrapped knives stabbed into city trees. Seriously. Knives wrapped with meat, butcher paper, and duct tape stabbed into trees in a city park there. This has been going on now for a year and a half. And other than confirming that the meat is not human, authorities have no clue as to who or why. Students at a small college in Spain now required to attend a lecture series on exorcism, demons, and hell. And I mention this because this is a publicly funded university in Spain, the University College of Barbaran and Colón, partly funded by the uh, Spanish Defense Ministry, and all the students are from military families. The first lecture delivered Monday by Father Jose Antonio Fortea, a well-known exorcist in the Roman Catholic Church, author of a book called Summa Demonica, a book on de demonology that has a manual for exorcists. And you might remember that uh, Father Fortea was involved in a ritual called the Exorcismo Magno, or Great Exorcism, last May in Mexico at the Cathedral of San Luis Potosi. This uh, Great Exorcism was intended to, in intended to banish the demons from Mexico. And uh, as if things weren't scary enough along the West Coast, as we talked yesterday, the warnings about Mount St. Helens and the San Andreas Fault. I recently talked with scientist, researcher, and author Stan Dale about the earthquakes and volcanic activity taking place around the Pacific Ocean's ring of fire. And Stan said that what really worries seismologists is a potential disaster that could be developing off the coast of Oregon. Yeah, I think we're about 56, maybe 57 years overdue for one last great release of pressure on this arc of fire, oh. and that's in the northwest of the United States at the Juan de Fuca Plate off the Oregon and Washington shoreline. They predict in excess of a Richter 9 when that releases. It's going, <laughs> getting ready, straining, mm -hmm. and when it goes, we can expect tidal waves from it. Mm. How, how bad would it be? Well, looking at uh, previous occurrences of this, um, the water has gone in and as far as 120 miles up a river basin there in Oregon, I think it is. Um, the tsunamis have uh, wiped out uh, coastal Indian villages. Um, you know, there are records of it in their totem poles and things of that nature. So, yeah, now that we're um, occupying it with high-tech power lines and, you know, roads and all the things, the mod cons, a tidal wave hitting some of the suppliers of water and power and gas could cause gas fires, electric fires, certainly will cause loss of power, chaos, you know, for days or weeks until you get power back on and, and get most of the people who need help into hospital. So uh, FEMA doesn't have enough people and materials to handle that disaster uh, all by itself. They certainly don't have enough to handle that disaster and one which might occur within a few hours or minutes of that down in California where the San Andreas Fault and all the parallel faults could get uh, released 
from the shock wave of that Richter 9 plus in the Juan de Fuca plate. So it could, it could uh, impact our national economy severely. It could create um, like looting and civil disorder on a magnitude we haven't seen before. Stan Deo is one of the featured speakers at this summer's Rocky Mountain International Prophecy Conference. I'll tell you how you can see Stan's presentation live and in real time, even if you're not going to the conference, in just a couple of minutes. This week on Skywatch TV, Steve Quayle talks about the Vatican's cover-up for evidence of pre-flood civilizations. Why would they do it, and what do they think they know? You'll see that program this Saturday, if you haven't seen it already this week, on the Victory Television Network, 3.30 p.m. Saturday afternoon, that's Central Time, and Coast to Coast at 7.30 p.m. Central Time on the Christian Television Network, that's DirecTV Channel 376, Dish Network Channel 267, and the Glory Star Satellite Channel 117. Of course, the uh, program available now at the Skywatch TV channel on Roku. And if you've not yet added the Skywatch TV channel to your Roku account, we've got instructions on exactly how to do that. Post it at skywatchtv.com slash Roku. We also have an audio-only version of all the programming here on Skywatch TV, the Skywatch TV podcast. You'll see the Skywatch TV podcast page at our website, but we're also in the iTunes store. And instructions on how you can add the Skywatch TV podcast to your iTunes account, your iTunes store account, that is, uh, posted uh, online, skywatchtv.com slash skywatchtv dash podcast. Just look at the address on the screen. Now, if you'd like to see Stan Dale's presentation at the Rocky Mountain International Prophecy Conference, which is just one of 32 presentations that will be streamed in real time and then archived for six weeks after the conference, there are three packages available for your uh, viewing pleasure and viewing convenience. For information and to sign up, log on to the website of our friends at Prophecy Watchers. That's prophecywatchers.com. We depend on your support to get the message out, as you might suppose, Television time is expensive, and we appreciate your gifts, and we like to return gift for gift during the month of May. A beautiful journal for your mom to record her thoughts, perhaps leave a legacy for her children and grandchildren, a mug for her to enjoy her coffee or tea, and two books that she'll find very useful, A Woman's Guide to Preparedness and Favorite Family Meals. We will send all of those to you for your donation in any amount, $20 or more, for information and to donate, log on to skywatchtv.com slash donate. And you can always help us with just a click of your index finger or whatever finger you use to click your mouse. As long as you're clicking like, subscribe, and share at these places on the internet. And if you're curious about what I'm thinking about when I'm not talking, I post it here, Facebook, Twitter, my website. Tomorrow, get to talk once again with my favorite person in the world. Science! Sci Friday on Skywatch TV with my wife, Sharon K. Gilbert. Until then, thank you for watching as we keep watch. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is Skywatch TV. Save nearly half off the cover price when you subscribe now to the brand new Skywatch TV magazine. For a limited time, from April 24th through June 24th, 60 days only, a five-year subscription to Skywatch TV magazine is just $99. That's more than $75 off the cover price, which is like getting two years for free. Exclusive content, articles on prophecy, discovery in the supernatural from Tom Horn, Chris Putnam, Josh Peck, science updates from Sharon K. Gilbert, geopolitics from yours truly, and guest writers like Pulitzer Prize nominated journalist Troy Anderson, renowned Bible scholar Dr. Michael Heiser, Pentagon advisor Lieutenant Colonel Bob McGinnis, and more. But there is more. As an early subscriber, you'll be the first to get this new book from Defender Publishing. I predict what 12 global experts believe you'll see by 2025. This is a $20 value and includes best-selling authors like Joel Richardson, Mark Biltz, Carl Gallops, Tom Horn, Paul McGuire, and more. Find out what they think about the coming war between ISIS and the Vatican, the future of the Temple Mount, and the Ark of the Covenant a worldwide manifestation of angels, and the coming age of human hybrids. And We'll also add this DVD, the best of Skywatch TV 2015, a $25 value, including our most compelling interviews from last year, including Chuck Missler, Steve Quayle, the discussion of the Georgia Guidestones with Chris Pinto, and more. All of this together worth more than $200, yours now for just $99, but only through June 24th. Subscribe now, Skywatch TV Magazine. Just call the number on your screen or log on to skywatchtvstore.com.